At the root of the war on men is fear. Fear that marriage isn't a solid investment. I believe that's one of the reasons women look to their jobs as their major source of fulfillment. As products of the divorce generation, today's young people have few models for how to make marriage work. The office, in comparison, feels easy. The marketplace we can control, our relationships we can't. Or so we think. And then, of course, women have the added burden of being raised in a culture that insists women don't need men. This attitude creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. By entering marriage with this cloud of negativity, women get exactly what they expect. Not much. It sounds too simple, or perhaps too good, to be true, but you'd be surprised how a simple change in attitude can change one's life. Women must start thinking about their futures differently than the way they were taught to think. If they plan to get married and have children, they should spend more time preparing for that part of their lives. They should assume husbands and children will be their primary identity, even if they work outside the home. In other words, pursue a career, but keep it in check. Say to yourself, I'm fine by myself, but I'm better with you, and your shot at love will improve exponentially. It's time for women to put down their swords. There's no reason marriage and motherhood, even in its traditional form, can't work for the modern world. Standing in women's way aren't outdated attitudes and government policies, as feminists claim. Standing in the way is that anything traditional is considered backward, as though everything that used to work no longer does. That's ridiculous. Change for change's sake is foolish. We love to think of ourselves as forward-thinking, as though all change is good. But it's not. The obesity rate has tripled in the last 40 years. Should we not look back at what we did before to see what we can do better? Today, it's considered a boon for women not to marry at all, even if they want children. Quote, the world as we've known it for a very long time, one in which a woman's value was tied to her role as a wife, is ending right in front of us. It is now standard for a woman to spend years on her own, learning, working, earning, socializing, having sex, and yes, having babies in the manner she and she alone sees fit. We are living through the invention of independent female adulthood. End quote. Wrote Rebecca Traster in Marie Claire. I ask you, is this progress? Messages like these are ad hominem attacks on men. They dismiss what men have to offer and make for a dysfunctional society all the way around. And our consumerist culture plays no small part in this effort. We've come to believe we need things when what we lack is purpose and a sense of place. At the end of the day, if we do it right, family is the one thing we can count on. We are always replaceable at work, but we are never replaceable at home. That is no small thing. Too many people are searching for meaning outside the home rather than in it. They're placing too much stock in what they think a job or career can offer. That was the problem with the feminist premise. It insisted the breadwinner gets the better end of the deal. That's just not true. Raising a family and pursuing a career are two different tasks, to be sure, but they're designed to work in tandem to produce one result, a family. That doesn't mean men can't ever change a diaper, that mothers can't ever hold a job, but it does mean that each gender brings something unique to the table, and we should honor that fact. Marriage isn't a competition about who has it better or worse. If you're already thinking about how to make your marriage equal, you're going about it all wrong. Gender equality means nothing. Men and women are already equal. Equal, but different. Feminism didn't just change Americans' understanding of sex and gender roles. It changed the very meaning of life. It took the spotlight off what matters, relationships and family, and put it where it doesn't belong, on money, power, and fame. It altered who we are as a people. 
The war on men wasn't initiated by the modern generation of women. The fault lies with the culture in which they were raised and with the previous generation of women that taught their daughters to be skeptical of men and marriage. Women today get the message that empowerment means one, being single and sexually active, two, never depending on a man, three, focusing exclusively on a career, four, being a single mom or having a child on your own. Not only do these messages undermine women's happiness, they result in antisocial behavior among men. America needs men to feel empowered as husbands and fathers, and that's the last thing modern men feel. That's why they're retreating from marriage. As reader Hugh Kendrick asks, rhetorically, I believe, in the New York Times, I wonder if the lack of marriageable men has resulted from a redefinition of men into something they're not. Of course it has. A person's gender plays directly into how they navigate the world. Men are programmed to make women happy and take a back seat at home. Now that women rule the workplace in addition to the home, men have nowhere to go. They've become passive. It's easy for men to be aggressive with other men, but when, men, when women are involved in that negotiation, the dynamic changes. Men are designed to go easy on women. They want to love them, not compete with them. To end the war on men, Americans must channel a time when our values were in sync with what the heart wants and how society does best. That's why love and family, not sex and independence, should once again become the goal. We have to stop clamoring for something we already have and have had for quite some time, equality. And we have to adopt the mantra, equal but different. The truth is men and women have been equally blessed with amazing and unique qualities that each bring to the table. Isn't it time we stopped fussing about who brought what and simply enjoy the feast?